Hey everyone, I'm still Ben, and I'm going to talk about sort of what I think of as the next level of game AI, about emergent behavior. And what I specifically want to talk about is how having emergent behavior in your game, or for that matter, wanting emergent behavior in your game, means you're not doing your job. Let me give you an example of what I mean. Let's say you're working on the uh, guard AI for some first person shooter game. One of the testers passes you in the hall and says, hey dude, I just noticed how if the player barricades himself in a room, the guards will throw grenades at it until they can get in. That's pretty cool that he knows how to do that. To which you respond, yeah, pretty cool, huh? Excuse me, I have to go somewhere. And of course what you're thinking to yourself is why the hell is it doing that? <laughs> so you uh, trace through stuff for a couple hours and you know, then you figured out why the hell it's doing that. It's doing that because the occupancy grid, blah, 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 threat calculation, blah, blah, utility, blah, 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 cancels out, which makes the guy throw a grenade. <laughs> and if you squint just right, you can see how that behavior naturally emerges from the way you've set things up. So when do you, then what do you do? you start getting proud. It's your AI after all, you made it. So this is, technically speaking, something you did, even if you didn't really do it. Actually, it's even better than something you did because you did it without even having to do it. It just emerged from this incredible AI substructure you've built up. You are an AI wizard. <laughs> Now, this is an example of a genuinely useful feature that just somehow fell from the sky. That's, that's not something that generally happens. Um, and I think there's this deeper issue here where we start valuing emergent behavior not because it's useful, but because it's emergent. And we start looking to it as a measure of the quality of our AI. And this, I think, is the real problem where we start to feel beholden to emergent AI. Let me give you another example, and this one's something of a confession, really. Um, when I came to work for Havoc and started working on Havoc AI, there was already a fairly decent collision avoidance system built in based on RVO. Now, RVO is known for its emergent behavior. It does, for one thing, something called um, a vortex formation, where if you put a bunch of people all facing each other and tell everybody to go to the other side, they'll all sort of swirl in the same direction as they pass, forming sort of whirlpool shape. And our stuff did this, and we actually had demos showing off how you know, everybody would swirl in this perfect circle, this perfect whirlpool on the way to work they're going. So, okay, fine, whatever. I was working on some changes to the utility function, trying to get it to behave better in medium density crowds when there's deadlock clearing to be done. So I made this little tweak and that I thought would improve things. And you know, it did in these um, uh, little situations. It um, made people get past each other much more quickly. But then I noticed that in the process, I had broken vortex formation. You know, there's still a little bit of swirling, but it was mostly just every man for himself. And here's the confession, I spent like two days trying to fix this. You know, the, old, the new function was better under these uh, certain scenarios. It got people to where they were going faster. But then after two days, I started feeling like I couldn't use it because this emergent behavior was threatening to pack up and leave if I didn't keep it happy. And then on a whim, I tried testing the two out specifically on this swirling scenario. And you know what I found? The new function was better in this scenario as well. People got to where they were going on average faster than the old, with the old system. It was less emergent, but it was more efficient. See, I'd become beholden to this emergent behavior. When it first shows up, it's like this gold star suggesting to you that you're doing something right. I think we get this feeling that emergent behavior is sort of our reward for well-designed AI, that proper AI should be emergent. So even if we didn't intend it initially, now all of a sudden we value it to the point where we're willing to protect it. And in the case of throwing a grenade to clear barricades, you know, it, it feels a little dirty to replace you know, this naturally emergent method with something more rigid and hard-coded and deliberate. But I'm here to tell you that this emergent behavior is not your friend. What are you going to do when somebody tells you to make some change, like have the guy only throw two grenades instead of three? Well, you barely know why he throws two grenade, three grenades, and you have no idea what you could change to make it throw two. You're going to say, sorry, that's just not how it emerged? And what are you going to do when somebody asks, or somebody, when you have to make a change for something outside, like you need to drop down the resolution of your occupancy grid because the graphics guys are all like, these beards aren't going to render themselves, and all of a sudden your emergent behavior just de-emerges. Are you going to say, well, guess it just wasn't meant to be, maybe next time? See, regular AI, it works for you. You tell it what you want it to do, and it does it. Emergent behavior, you're at its mercy. 
you try to keep it happy and to get it to do kind of what you want it to do, and then you basically have to accept what it gives back to you. It's like you work for it. I guess it's not surprising, though, that we value these little emergences. I mean, we work with these AIs so long, we invest so much into their growth, they're kind of like our children. And what does every parent want for their child? That it should surpass them. That they should think of things, do things that we never even conceived of. You know, we guide and correct them where we can, but at the end of the day, it's like eventually we have to stop holding their hand and send them out into the world. But you know what? Your AI is not your child. Your AI is your mindless automaton servant, and your highest aspirations for it should be A, that it does only and exactly what you told it to do, and B, that what you told it to do makes the game a hell of a lot of fun. That's it. Now, I know this sounds limiting and rigid, and yeah, maybe at a certain point we do want to uh, have agents that can plan and reason and take buckets off their heads without being specifically programmed with a bucket check. And you know, I really do think that someday we'll get there, and emergent behavior will become a part of our toolkit. But not yet. And do you know how I know not yet? Because of your own distrust for your AI. Look, if somebody came to you and said, can your AI do X, Y, Z, and you're like, yeah, it does, I put it in a check specifically for that, that's you doing your job. If, on the other hand, you said, well, I haven't specifically tested that, but I assume so because my system's designed to robustly handle these situations, hey, that's still you doing your job. If you said, I don't know, I guess it might, let's find out, that's you not doing your job. Even if it does turn out to do X, Y, Z just because it's so damn emergent, you still obviously couldn't trust it to do X, Y, Z, so it's like it never did X, Y, Z at all. It's still a problem. You still have to fix that. All right, look, I'm not going to tell you that this stuff is always, always evil, and you always, always need to fix it. You just need to keep your priorities in order. So, you know, the next time some fragile, special little behavior emerges, like a fragile, special little dandelion, you know what, that's okay, it's nice. You know, you should, uh, you should learn what you can from it. You know, even go ahead and water it. Well, water it if you've got the water to spare. But you know, the very moment that it stops serving your needs, the very second that you find yourself having to compromise between what it wants and what you want, then you take that newly emerged little behavior and you shove it back in. Thank you.